form in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Amen. Amen. Verse number 10. Let's read that again real quickly. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Amen. With the help of the Holy Ghost tonight. And I need his help. Uh, I will preach for just a few minutes about when God rolls up His sleeves. Amen. Can we pray one more time and ask the Lord to help us? Thank you, Lord, for your presence that we felt already in this house. Thank you for these kind people. Thank you for this, this kind pastor, for this church. I pray in this service tonight that somebody's heart would be encouraged. I pray that this church, God, would be encouraged. I pray that your name would be exalted, Lord, your people would be edified. And everything that's done, Lord, from this point forward would be done for the glory of God. I pray you'd anoint my mind to think of my mouth to speak as I attempt to preach your word. I pray you'd anoint the ears and the hearts of this congregation. Let he that hath an ear hear what the Spirit would say to the church tonight. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. You may be seated here tonight. Amen. As we read this portion of Scripture, uh, there's something I want to make clear very quickly as we go into this portion of Scripture together. Uh, that there is an interpretation for the Bible and there is also an application for Scripture. Amen. I, I am fully aware. Uh, 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 one of my Bible school professors told me one time that the Bible can never mean what the Bible never meant. Amen. And that's important sometimes, amen, to keep in mind. And I understand that there is an interpretation for the Word of God and there is also an application. Uh, there were things that were written and recorded in God's holy Scriptures that were recorded for Israel, recorded for the Jewish people, amen, recorded for a specific purpose and a specific interpretation in mind, amen. Yeah. When the book of Isaiah was written, it was written to the Jewish people. It was written as God, through the, through the uh, pen of that prophet, it was written by inspiration of God to those people in that day. And there's an interpretation there. And as you begin to read kind of the context of everything that surrounds this portion of Scripture. And it's important to study the Bible. Right. Not just, And I know that's a, that's asking a lot. Amen. In the day now we're living in, it's hard to get people to even read their Bible, much less study them. Amen. And I understand that that's asking a lot sometimes. But uh, but it's important to study the, the surrounding context of what you're reading in the Word of God to know it's full, to understand it fully the way that it's right. interpreted to be understood. And as you begin to read these surrounding chapters and these surrounding verses, uh, you, you will, there's a, a prophecy that's given here by the prophet Isaiah concerning the Hebrew people. He promised them that, that the one day they would become an eventual nation. Yeah. And, and we know that that was fulfilled. And, and, and in 1948, that, that came to fulfillment. But God, and He begins to tell them that in spite of all the things that they've been through and all the situations that they've faced, and anybody that's a, a student of the Word of God knows there was quite a cycle they had going in Israel for a while. Amen. They would rebel against God. God would raise up a, ca a, a, a captor, an oppressor, and they would bring them in. They would take them into captivity. Right. Amen. They would be in bondage. They would lift up their voice. They would repent. God would raise up a deliverer. God would raise up a prophet. He would raise up a voice of God. In that day, in that hour, they would repent of that. God would deliver them. And, and there would be a time of peace and there would be a time of righteousness and godliness. And then not long long ago, because they were people just like we're people, amen. And they would go right back into rebellion. They would rebel against God and the cycle would start all over again. But in this portion of scripture, God's telling them through the prophet Isaiah that in spite of all everything that you've done, in spite of everywhere that you've been and all the problems you've been involved with, I just want you to know that I've still got a plan for you. I've still got a purpose for you. Amen. And I am still on your side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm thankful for that tonight. But I got a one little problem. I'm not Jewish. Amen. And, and if you're here, amen, and you have that privilege, amen, then you can take a, a, a double dose of it here tonight. Amen. And I believe that there's an original interpretation, and we talked about that. But I also know that in the New Testament it says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished to all good works. And we know that if it's, if it's in God's Word, it is applicable to God's people. Amen. And so when we begin to read this portion of Scripture, uh, we see an application here that I felt the Lord deal with me about it. And I wanted to come by and share with you for just a few minutes. Amen. Talking about it here, and it kind of goes along with the theme of the service already here tonight. In verse number 9, it said, Break forth 
them in joy. Yeah. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. Yeah. Amen. Can I tell you here tonight, we got a reason to rejoice. Yeah. You've got a reason to shout. You've got a reason to praise God. God how many in here God's ever done something yeah. for them? And you got a reason. Hallelujah. And, and did the, what, what, did the, what, the, what did the psalmist say? He said, let every, everyone, the, every creature have breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're here and you're breathing, you got a reason to shout. you got a reason to rejoice. Amen. We've all got reasons to lift up our voice and give glory to God here tonight. Amen. And I love that part. Amen. As I was studying this a while back, I ran into verse number 10. Amen. And it says, the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. Oh, that kind of, I kind of, kind of caught me. I thought, that's a weird way of putting that. Amen. And I'm just a simple guy. Amen. I don't, I don't claim to be no theologian or, or no, no smart. My mom used to call me a smart cookie. I don't know about that. Amen. But, amen. <laughs> I'm just a simple guy. I thought, well, man, that's kind of strange. That's a strange way of putting that. Yeah. So I got to read that again and again and again and studying that. And in modern 21st century Kentucky lingo, you know what that means? That means God rolled up his sleeves. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes here tonight. Is when God rolls up his sleeves. Amen. And as I begin to study uh, and ponder this portion of scripture and begin to allow God to speak to my heart over this, amen, I couldn't help but think that there's only two good reasons that somebody rolls up their sleeves. Amen. That's what I'm talking. This is simple preaching. It ain't profound. Amen. But I pray it'll be a blessing to you. I pray the Lord will help somebody and encourage them here tonight. But, but the first. The thing that come to mind as I was studying this portion of Scripture, you know the first reason somebody rolls up their sleeves? Because they're getting ready to go to work. Right. Yeah. Amen. It's right. almost synonymous. You can see it. Uh, maybe a task. Maybe somebody walking up to a big pile of rocks that needs moved. Or, or maybe walking up to a big pile of wood that needs split. Amen. I, I, was, I was talking to your pastor just before church tonight. And I, the reason I'm in town, I'm down here on the south side of Richmond uh, helping build the Planet Fitness. Amen. On the south side of town. And I, what was supposed to be a two-day job has turned into a lot more than a two-day job. Amen. And there's been a whole lot of dirty just work involved. Amen. But you can kind of see it in your mind's eye if you use your imagination. Maybe somebody walking up to a hole that needs dug or, or a ditch that needs dug or rocks that need moved or firewood that needs split. And they begin to size up the task and they realize that there's going to be some work involved and in in what they're getting ready to undertake. Amen. And you can see it reach down and unbutton that shirt sleeve and begin to turn it up because they know that they're getting ready to get their hands dirty and they're getting ready to go to work. Amen. Can I tell you this house tonight? God is not afraid to go to work on the behalf of his people. Amen. I'm thankful I serve a God who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Amen. Thank God we serve a God who knows where we are. He knows the situations that face us. He knows that we're people. He knows that we're flesh. He knows there's things we can't do in and of ourselves. Amen. But I'm thankful that when I come to a problem that I can't handle it and of myself, God's not afraid to go to work for me. He's not afraid to work on my behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look up that word arm, he may bear his holy arm. They made that word arm is the Hebrew word Zoroa. Amen. And that probably means about as much to you as it did to me. Amen. I, I don't know Hebrew, so I had to look it up. Amen. But that word Zoroa don't just mean his arm, it means his dominant arm or the arm of power. power yeah. Amen. There's a few things I can do with my left hand. Amen. I can, I can, I can, I shoot like I'm left-handed. If I'm shooting a bow or I'm shooting a gun, I shoot left-handed. I can even write legibly with my left hand. Amen. I, I, I'm a lot slower at it, and I'm not nearly. It's not nearly as pretty. Amen. It's not pretty with my right either, but it definitely pretty with my left. Hallelujah. Amen. But if I really, there's a task that really needs to be done. I use my right arm. Amen. Yeah. Because I know that's my arm of power. Hallelujah. Yeah. Aren't you thankful that you serve a God tonight? Hallelujah. That when he does something, he don't do it halfway, but he gives it everything he's got. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm thankful when the problems come and the bills come due and the comforts bear and the situations are severe and the sicknesses are strong. Amen. That I serve a God who's not afraid to put all into it. He's not afraid to go to work for me and for what is going on in my life. Right. We serve a God who's not afraid to roll up his sleeves. We serve a mighty God tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you wouldn't think that by the way some folks conduct themselves. Amen. I just got talking to somebody. I was telling we, we were talking about Sunday. I said, man, some Christian folks, 
you didn't know they was Christian, you wouldn't know them. You wouldn't know it. Yeah. Look like they got weaned on lemon juice. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look like they went, you know, the, somebody shot their dog and, 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 and they lost their best friend. They, they look like they're sour as can be. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. When I got saved, they meant it did something to the inside of me. And praise God, it did something to the outside. Not just my clothes, but it did something to my, my countenance. It did something to my, my attitude and my atmosphere. Amen. Because God made a change all the way through me. Hallelujah. But can I tell you here tonight, you're not serving a weak God. You're not serving a God that's distant out of the eon somewhere who doesn't care about you or care about your problems or care about what you are. Amen. But God, He cares about you and He's mighty to save and He's able to do whatever you need done here tonight. The God of the Bible was the God that made a dry path across the Red Sea in Exodus 15. He was the same God that just a couple chapters later when they started complaining about not having any water, he made water flow out of a rock. Yes. And I'm a plumber. I know a little bit about water. Just a little bit. Amen. And I'm not a smart guy like I said earlier. Amen. But I know one thing. Water don't come from rocks. Praise God. But when God gets involved, it can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the same God just a few chapters later. Amen. That, that, that allowed, it talks about in Deuteronomy chapter 29, that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and their clothes and their shoes didn't wear out. Think about that for just a minute. Amen. It's hard to find quality stuff anymore. Amen. It's hard to get a pair of shoes last a couple years, much less 40, of walking every day. Amen. But that's what God does. Hallelujah. He defies life. He allows impossibilities to become possibilities. And he's able to make it happen for his people. Right. Right. Woo. Yes, you get to read in there just a few chapters later in Exodus 16. Just to talk about how they got out of the wilderness. It's amazing to me. Just a chapter before that, God split the Red Sea and let them cross on dry ground. There wasn't even any mud. Right. Dry ground. That's impossible. Right. Right. But it's not impossible with God. Right. Right. But just one chapter later, what happens? They start getting all, they get hungry. Mm -hmm. They start belly aching and complaining, telling God, or telling God and Moses, what'd you do? Drag us out here in the desert to die? Mm -hmm. right. It's just like people, isn't it? Yeah. It's, so, it's so easy to forget mm -hmm. the things that God's done yeah. right. when you're in the midst of your problem. Right. But they start complaining, and what's God do? He starts letting food fall from the clouds. Hallelujah. Because that's what God can do. Yeah, right. If he's got to make it materialize out of thin air, that's what he can do tonight. Yeah, Amen. Right. Hey, I, I can't help but think about Numbers chapter 11. Amen. When the manna suddenly became not enough for them, they were eating food that was literally falling from the sky, but somehow they became discontented with what God was doing, and they began to complain again. Amen. But God, hallelujah, he just sent a flock of quail, rerouted them. Amen. Sent them right by the camp so they could have meat to go with their manna. That's the God you're serving here tonight. Hallelujah. He can make it happen on your behalf if he's got to reroute logic and he's got to change nature and he's got to do whatever he's got to do even to make it happen for you and the problem that you're in. Right. 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 Think about Elijah the brook of Cherith, the widow woman and his son. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 4 with the endless oil. I think about the crowd of 5,000 plus. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 14 where when it was all said and done, he didn't just meet the need. He met it in excess. Amen. There was 12 baskets of leftovers that they took up when it was all said and done. Hallelujah. Because God, when he does something, he does it right. He does it well. He does it with everything that he's got. Amen. Can I tell you in this house tonight? Amen. I, I love to believe that every one of us, we've got it all buttoned up. We got no problems. We got no situations. We got no circumstances. Amen. You're rich. You're increased with goods. You got everything taken care of. But I know better than that because we're people. Hallelujah. And then no doubt there are people under the sound of my voice here tonight that you're in a problem, you're in a circumstance, and you're wondering how it's all going to work out. But can I tell you, God sent a simple preacher by just to let you know that God's not afraid to roll up his sleeves and go to work on your behalf. Hallelujah. God's got your best interests in mind. And he's not afraid to do whatever it takes to make it happen. In every situation in the Word of God, God shows His absolute authority and His limitless power in spite of the opposition or unfavorable circumstances. 
I can't get it to go right sometimes when everything is favorable. Yeah. <laughs> you ever done all that you could, had everything going right, everything seemed to be going good, and no matter what you did, no matter what you tried to put in place or what you tried to plan for, it always went wrong. Because <laughs> that's just the nature of the beast. That's just how life goes. Amen. But God's not like that. God can change things totally around on its axis to make it work on your behalf. God should be by here tonight just to let you know that He's on your side and He's willing to go to work on the behalf of His people. Hallelujah. In every situation, when God gets involved, possibilities are possible. Impossibilities become opportunities for God to show His power and His might. Amen. And it's nothing less for you than it was for everyone of them. Amen. God didn't care about them any more than He cares about you. And if you've got problems going on in your life, circumstances and situations that you need God to move in, prayers that you're waiting to be answered, God knows where you are. He knows the situation. He knows the circumstance. And He's willing to go to war on your behalf. Praise Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply <laughs> all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful tonight that we have a New Testament promise. Hallelujah. That tells us that if we'll go to God, God will go for us. Amen. If we've got problems, hallelujah, God's got the answer. If we've got situations, God's got the answer. If you've got sicknesses, God can still heal. If you've got lost loved ones, God can still save. Amen. And He's not afraid to go to work for you. I can't help but think of that portion of, portion of Scripture, Philippians 4.19, and I'll think about that story of Hudson Taylor so many years ago, that missionary to China, who recognized that God was able to meet any need that he had if he was pursuing the work of God. In his journal, it said that he wrote, Our Heavenly Father is a very experienced one. He knows very well that his children wake up with a good appetite every morning. Yeah. He sustained three million Israelites in the wilderness for 40 plus years. We do not expect that he will send three million missionaries to China. But if he did, we would have ample means to sustain them all. Depend on it. God's work done God's way will never lack God's supply. Amen. If you're doing all you can do for God, if you're doing God's work, God's going to work for you. It's a promise. You can stand on it. You can take it to the bank. You can cash it. You can know without a shadow of a doubt, without a lie from hell, that God is on your side and he's willing to work on your behalf here tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Be assured, if you're working for God, God will work for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Secondly, here tonight, somebody rolls up their sleeves like you're going to work, but there's no reason somebody might roll up their sleeve. And this is what comes to me. I know it's simple. Amen. But this is what God gave me. Amen. If somebody roll up their sleeves when they get ready to go to work, somebody also roll up their sleeves when they get ready to fight. Hallelujah. Yeah, maybe you've been a part of that situation. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. You ever been around somebody and you can just feel the tension in the air escalate? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all grinning, so you must have been there too. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, maybe it was you. Hopefully not. Amen. Hopefully you're pursuing peace with all men. Amen. Okay. Hopefully that's not you. And if it all if it is, maybe y'all pray through. Praise right. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I've been in those situations. Where you, where people crosswords got exchanged, amen. Insults started flying back and forth, and for it was all sudden that you could feel. It was like you could feel the, the pressure in the air, yeah. and then start escalating. Yeah. It's kind of like when you get a coon back into a corner, amen. I, 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 like I said, I'm a simple guy. I don't know a lot, but I know one thing, amen. Hollywood and their portrayal of coons as being cute, cuddly little animals that you can take into your home and, and hug every night before you go to bed. Amen. It's nothing but a lie. Praise God. About like everything else they tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they look cute and they look cuddly and they look all furry and soft. Amen. But you get one back into a corner. Amen. And it will change nature on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I can't help but think 
because I was as I was reading this portion of scripture that a reason somebody might roll up their sleeves is when they're getting ready to fight. If we were in a situation tonight, we were in one of those situations where you could feel the pressure in the air begin to escalate, and then one of those guys reach down and start rolling up their sleeves, you know one thing, it's getting ready to be on. Amen. Amen. Something's getting ready to happen because it's a sign, amen, that something is getting ready to take place. Can I tell you here tonight that the God that you're serving is nothing less, amen, that he's not afraid to roll up his sleeves and fight for you? Right. We serve a God who's not afraid to work for you. We serve a God who's not afraid to fight for you. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm thankful here tonight that I serve a God. You serve a God. We serve a God here tonight that's not afraid, amen, to fight for his people. He's not afraid to fight for what's his. Hallelujah. Thank God, amen, that we have one we can depend on who's mightier than we could ever be. Amen. And when we face the enemy of our soul, we face those ones who would seek to bring us down. We have a God that will reach and pick us up and he'll defend us from whatever hell has in store for you tonight. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You begin to read the interpretation of this portion of scripture, you really begin to study it. The wording in the Hebrew likens it to a warrior who's preparing himself for imminent battle. Yeah. Praise God. It begins to go into, into depth just by the way that it's phrased when you do some studying. Amen. That the loose sleeve of the shirt of that day and hour. Amen. As well as that of the arm, outer garment leaves that arm completely free so that in an instant that left arm will pass the right arm. Will push that sleeve up. Exposing that dominant head and making it bare. That allows the individual, a soldier, preparing to swing a sword, for instance, full range of motion and maximum ability. The image portrayed in this text represents Jehovah as he is suddenly prepared to inflict tremendous effectual judgment so swiftly and powerfully that all the ends of the world shall see the salvation of our God. Amen. We serve a God who's not afraid to work. He's not afraid to fight on your behalf. Amen. When it's all said and done. I'm thankful I serve a God. There's, I, there's been times in my life, maybe you're the same. Yeah. But I was in a situation, the enemy was fighting, God went to war on my behalf, and when it was all said and done, amen, I've had people that were lost as a ball in high weed stand back and say, you know, that couldn't have been anything else but God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful, amen, tonight that the God that I serve, he's not weak. He's not under somebody else's authority. He's not wondering if he's going to win. Amen. We've got to kind of twist it up in our minds sometimes and we think that there's some big fight going on, some big competition or some big old struggle going on over what's going to happen between the devil and God. But can I tell you, the battle's already been won. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil doesn't stand a chance. He knows that. He knows that. You ought to know that here tonight. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And there's not a thing that hell can do about it. Oh, glory to God. Wow. To know that we serve a God that the enemies that bring us so low, it doesn't matter to him. It doesn't faze him. It doesn't worry him or bother him. Hallelujah. But God, when he stands up and goes to war, even hell itself has to bow a knee. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We look at Israel at the Red Sea. That's his 14. I've already made mention of it here tonight. You see some kind of big revolt? Some big bunk from nature as they push back against what God wanted to do? Absolutely not. He just did it. I look at Joshua. Amen. The walls of Jericho. Right. As they begin to march. Amen. And they begin to obey God. And they begin to do what God asked them to do. Even at the, even at the risk of looking crazy. Amen. Okay. That's just a side note here tonight. That if you need something from God, you ought to obey. Amen. Even to the point of maybe even looking a little ridiculous. Amen. Because what you need might be right on the other side of looking ridiculous. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. I like, to, I like to think about the word of God when I'm studying it like, like a real event. Because it was. Right. <laughs> A lot of times we treat it like a fable book and stories from days gone by. It's not that it's not that way, folks. It's a couch. It really happened. It really happened. And then can you imagine? 
being one of the inhabitants of that city in Jericho, watching these crazy people marching around your city. Six days in a week, six days, one right after another. Out there marching, knowing your walls are thick. Your walls are high. There's lots of people. Hey Amen. There's not a thing they can do about it, or so you think. Hey Amen. And they're marching. And then that seventh day, Joshua comes out and he tells the people of Israel, today we're going to march, but it's going to be a little bit different. Amen. We're going to march around six times. And on that seventh time, going back to what we was talking about just a little bit ago, sister, I want you to shout and I want you to rejoice like that wall's already fallen. Hallelujah. And then you get to obey God and no doubt there were people standing on those walls mocking and jeering and making fun of them. Amen. But they obeyed God and they did what God told them to do. And it looked impossible in the eyes of man, but it looked possible in the eyes of God. And when it was all said and done, the walls began to shake, then bricks began to come apart. Amen. And God moved in a mighty way that we're still talking about thousands of years later because God's not afraid to fight for his people. Hallelujah. I think about David and Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17. Seen that little quote, I don't know if it's on a t-shirt or a pillow or a rug or what it was on. Amen. But it said, yeah, hallelujah. It was just a little quote that somebody wrote down. And it said that, you know, Israel saw a giant too big to beat. But David saw a, a, a giant too big to miss. Amen. Hallelujah. And what looked like an impossible task with the enabling and the hand of God involved became a witness of the power of Almighty Jehovah. Hallelujah. Tonight, here tonight, if you're in this situation of, of your life, if you're in the fight of your life, like I already said, I love to believe that we're all in, in, in control and we're all sleeping well at night and there's no lost loved ones and there's no sicknesses and there's no problems and there's no needs, but I know better than that because I'm a person and you're a person and we're people. Amen. We've all got problems. i got things going on in my life right now that I need God to move in in a desperate way. But can I tell you here tonight that God is working on your behalf and He's fighting for you. When it's all said and done, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 10, and all the ends of the earth shall see salvation for God. Right. <laughs> When that report comes back <laughs> and you're looking at it square in the face and you think, man, it's all downhill from here. Uh -huh. Can I tell you tonight that it ain't downhill with God? Right. Hallelujah. God's just as big as He always has been. Right. We say that, but do we really live it? I'll be honest, I'll be transparent here tonight. There's times in my life when situations have come my way, like they come your way. Amen. Where I've looked at a problem or a sickness or a bill, and I thought, God, how in the world are we going to make this work? Forgetting everything that God has already done, not just in His Word, but for me as well. Amen. And I forget that God is still just as big of a God as He always has been. He hasn't lost any power, He hasn't lost any authority. He's still just as much in control as He always has been. Amen. And if you're serving God, amen, and you're working for God, and you're doing everything in your power to follow after him be assured tonight that God knows it and God is working on your behalf oh God hallelujah Jesus thank you God God always gets the glory yeah. hallelujah yes. that's a good thing about being saved ain't it yes. Woo! praise yes. God to know that God always gets the glory yes. Yes. oh yes yes Y'all are my witnesses tonight. If the sickness ever gets a hold of me and the doctors say I'm doomed, I want you to know that till the day I draw my last breath, I will forever contend and preach and believe that God is still able to heal. If I go bankrupt and I end up going out on the street, which ain't a very good possibility because it says in God's Word, 
I've seen, I was old and now I'm young, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. That's a promise I'm standing on here tonight. But if things ever crash for me and mine, I want you to know until the day I die, I'll always contend and preach that God is still able to provide. Amen. Because He's a healer. He's a provider. He's a protector. He's my great high priest and He's working for me. Hallelujah. And if you're saved in this house tonight, He's not just working for me, but He's working for you too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 106, chapter, chapter 106, verses 7 and 8 says, Our fathers understood not thy works in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Listen to this. Nevertheless, he saved him for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter the overwhelming situation, no matter the severity of the storm or how hot the battle may be raging, amen, you can have hope tonight and assurance in your soul that no matter what may take place, God always gets the glory. Amen. Billy Sunday, a preacher from years gone by, it's simple, but I love it. He said, we serve a God who delights himself in man's impossibilities. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Praise God. There's things that come upon us in this life that we can't do in and of ourselves. Yeah. I'm a man. I like to think my dad's raised me from the time I was, my grandpa as well, from the time I was young enough to listen to him, old enough to listen to him, rather. You always, you hold your own road. You make your own way. But if we're not careful, we'll allow that to become our mentality in the spiritual. Right. And we forget that there's things we just can't do by ourselves. Right. Right. I got a brother, two brothers really, that are desperately lost. And if I could go to where they're living right now, and I could put them in a headlock and I could drag them to the altar, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yes. yes. Now he knows it don't work that way. I've got people in my family that are desperately ill. They need a touch from the hand of God. And I love, I've, I've, told, I've, I've told people close to me before. My wife, I don't mean to embarrass her tonight, but my wife's a type 1 diabetic. And I've told her before, I said, if I could, I would do it. Yeah. Right now, I'd do whatever it took. Yeah. But can I tell you, every night don't work that way. Yeah. There's things we can't do, Miss Sparks. There's things I wish I could do. Right. There's things I would do. Yes. Even if it cost me and myself, I'd do whatever it took yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. But I can't do it. Yeah. But the things that we can't do, He can. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when we fall short, He don't fall short. He goes above and beyond. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Hallelujah. That we can ask or think. That's the kind of God we're serving here tonight. He's not just has a, a limited uh, resource uh, stockpile that he goes to and says, well, maybe this will work and maybe this will work. But whatever it takes for the situation that you're involved in, that's exactly what he'll do. God is able. Yes, yes. yes. help us, God. Help us. When the situation's resolved and all the dust settles, that storm rolls over the hill. I feel this in my soul tonight. I don't know who I'm talking to. That's being funny about preaching somewhere where you don't know folks' rumor well. But I don't know your struggles. You don't know mine. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. But I know God. But I know God dropped this in my heart for a reason. And I want to tell you tonight, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I want you to listen. Amen. And when it's all said and done, Hallelujah. And the dust settles and the storm rolls over the hill. You're going to be able to look at it and say that was nothing short of a move of Almighty God. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To know that the God of the universe, the one that put it in the stars in the sky, put the wind in the clouds, and in the grass in the field, the song in the bird. Amen. Hallelujah. The spots on the deer. He's the same one that's working for you. Hallelujah. He's working on your behalf. Hallelujah. The world's going to know too. You're not just going to know. I believe everybody around you is going to know that it was God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 
Amen. Just like Rahab at Jericho. Amen. She was lost. She wasn't saved. She wasn't a Jew. She wasn't a part of God's chosen people. Amen. At that point. But she, she talked to those two spies there in Joshua chapter number 2. And she said to the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Listen to this. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did on the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage. They were discouraged, brother. Neither did they remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. You may have to walk through the valley in the shadow of death and hear tonight. And then the one thing that's so great about our God, you ain't walking by yourself. Hallelujah. You ain't know I walk through the valley in the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Hallelujah. He's walking by our side. He's working on our behalf and he's ready to go to war for his people. Woo! That ought to do something in your soul. Hallelujah. Do you know that when God rolls up his sleeves, miracles happen. When God rolls up his sleeves, impossibilities become opportunities. When God rolls up his sleeves, lame people start walking, deaf people start hearing, and blind people start seeing. Hallelujah. He ain't lost his power. He ain't lost his authority. He's just as much God as he was in this precious book. Hallelujah. And he's working for you. Amen. What a promise. What a hope. God Almighty knows where we are. Yes, He does. He knows who we are. Yes. He knows what's facing us. He knows what we need. And when we go to God in simple prayer, with simple faith, we can feel God begin to move. Just like those people. People of God marching around Jericho can't help but wonder what began to happen in their hearts when they began to hear them blocks begin to crack. And know that God just did that. I can't help but think about those people that belonged to the city of Jericho as they were standing on those walls and they began to feel tremble. Amen. And no doubt knew that their God, He's working for them. Hallelujah. I can't help but think what those Philistines in the camp felt like. Amen. When their champion, the one that nobody could beat, amen, somebody beat him. And he fell to the ground and everybody knew, amen, that it could not have been anything short of a miracle. I wonder what happened, amen, to the crowd there. Amen. When that, that blind man began to see or that woman with the issue of blood, no doubt everybody around knew who she was. Amen. When she got healed, it was a testimony. Amen. That nobody but God can do with this happening right now. Amen. God's going to work for you tonight. Come on. I love that old song. Who but God can do such things as these? Who but God can do such things as these? He calms the storm waters. When he speaks, demons flee. Tell me, who but God, hallelujah, can do such things as these? I'm thankful I serve a God that's not bound by human limitation. He's not bound by opinion polls. He's not bound by the votes of Congress. Amen. But he's bound only by his word. And his word says that he can do all things. And all things are possible to him. Amen. Thank God we serve a God who goes above and beyond. Right. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If we could stay it tonight, it's been a simple sermon from a simple preacher with a simple message. God is on your side. What a promise tonight. What a promise to know that the God of the universe, He knows my name. I know him, sister, but thank God. Right. He knows me. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. You know, I've been I, I've had the opportunity very few times in my life, but I've had the opportunity to kind of be around in a general vicinity. Maybe you have as well. Of someone who is well known, somebody who was famous. Right? 
And you know, I, I, for instance, I know a, a fella that I went to Bible school with. He worked. At, he was from the same town, went to the same high school, worked at the same grocery store. Hey Amen. That Kurt Warner, the, the, quarter, the Super Bowl quarterback, worked at. He said, I know where his house is. He said, I've seen, I've met his parents. He said, I know him. He said, I know where he lives. He, knew where he worked here at this store, at the same high school I did. He said, I know everything there is to know about him. But no matter what I know about him, he doesn't know me. <laughs> but to think tonight that you don't just know God. God knows you. Right. Yes, he does. He knows the prayers you prayed. <coughs> he knows the tears you cried. Yes, he knows the heartbreaks you've had to endure. Yes, he, he knows the ones that have walked away. Right. The problems you faced, the sicknesses you you had to go through. He knows them. Yes. He knows every detail, every circumstance. He knows. But thank yes, God. Does. Not only does he know, he cares. He cares. Right. Not only does he care, he's willing and able to move on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. A simple sermon from a simple preacher just to let you know God's on your side. If you've been doubting, don't doubt it. Amen. I don't know you. I don't know your situation. I just know what God told me. And he wanted me to let you know God's got it. Amen. God's on your side. He's rolling up his sleeves. And he's going to go to work for you. He's going to fight for you if you'll let him. Amen. And when it's all said and done, you'll be able to stand back and testify, testify of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. Somebody could come. My wife come. Tonight we're going to sing. Amen. Come down to these altars if you would. I, I don't know who's here. Like I said, I don't know your situations or your problems, the things you go through, but I know God. He meant it. He knows you and He knows me. And He thought enough of you to talk to me to come by to tell you that He's on your side. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed. God's able to do it. Hallelujah. Can somebody come help us on the piano tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. God's on your side. Could we come tonight find a place to pray? That situation you've been dealing with, let God have it. God, hallelujah. That worry yes, you've been entertaining in your heart, let God have it. Worries are like that old, that old, I think this old preacher said, worries are a lot like, an old, like a rocking chair. They give you something to do, but you're never going to get anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Let worry, amen, rest in the hands of Almighty God. Let the problems you're facing rest in the hands of your Creator. Let God take care of it. He's able to do it tonight. Can we come find a place to pray tonight? Hallelujah. Give God glory. Give Him praise in advance for what He's already doing. Hallelujah. He's able. Hallelujah. The Lord will go back. Glory, glory, glory be to God. I pray that it helps somebody in this house tonight, God. Move for these people, God. Lord, you know the situations that are facing the problems and the circumstances. God, that surround us every day. We're people made of dust. But God, you're able. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. I pray God you strengthen their resistance. 